hello <laughs> welcome to my channel and um welcome to the basic requirement of being a booktuber aka the best books of x year we're at the end of 2023 this has been crazy i feel like time is slowly but surely slipping away from all of us we love a good existential moment but um i have some books <laughs> that i would like to talk about that are my favorite books that i've read this year three poetry collections um one two three four five maybe ten in total so anyway this is the longest intro ever let's get into the books where do i want to begin all right let's start with a, a new recent read that was Love Theoretically by Allie Hazelwood. Once again, I said I got into my romance era, but this one specifically just spoke to me. And I always feel meh about romances sometimes because once again, I'm a little more of a literary reader. So I like, I don't like when things come so easily to characters or things just seem to work out. Like I'm like, that doesn't really reflect life to me. But I found that this romance was good because number one, the main character is a people pleaser. And when I tell you, I felt personally attacked while reading this because I too have the tendency, the desire, the never ending urge to please people, <laughs> often at my own expense. So main character was relatable to me. She just recently received her PhD in theoretical or experimental theoretical physics she is in her 20s uh feeling as though she's not making enough money um she has diabetes which causes her to you know of course like fear health care so i felt like that piece is what made it feel more realistic to me like the struggles she just felt like a super real character to me um i thought the romance was nice it was very very good for me and i have no complaints once again i am also a lover of science i was actually a science major in college so i love physics i love the universe i love black holes i love kinetic energy and all of that and also physiology so this just felt like me in a book and it was good i liked it so yeah favorite book next favorite book that i read is a new book um, that I just finished reading. Small Things Like These by Claire Keegan. This is a very, very tiny but mighty um, little short piece of fiction that is set in Ireland in the 1980s. It's 1985. Um, it takes place during the week of Christmas. We have our main character who is Bill for long. He has a family of all daughters. He also does not know who his biological mother is. I'm sorry, he knows who his biological mother is, but he doesn't know who his father is. And this novel kind of like takes place in that, the stigma surrounding that, um, especially for a super Catholic country like Ireland and the role the church played in specifically young women, young mothers who were unmarried and who had children and the forced labor that they would do the conditions that they were held in um how they would separate them from their children just i had no idea about this so this piece of fiction this piece of historical fiction really highlighted that for me and it was interesting to just read from the perspective of a super reflective kind of character who is like craving or who appreciates the role who appreciates the role that women play in his life um and he decides to do something about it and it's like this small gesture and how a small gesture is actually something really really huge and can change a life so i love this i think it was such a good like story surround around like what we can do giving back to other people also standing up against injustices um, once again, this is all about the um, laundries in Ireland at the time that I did not know about, but stunning writing, just very quiet, meditative, reflective writing that I loved. My next favorite book is Monstrilio, and I loved, <laughs> loved Monstrilio. 
I just thought it was such an interesting take at grief. Like, I don't know. I haven't read anything like this before. Um, essentially, Monstrilio is about this family. We meet a mother and father as their son who was born with one fully functioning lung and then one that was damaged. So he didn't really have a high life expectancy. He ends up passing away as a young child and the mother takes this piece of lung from her child and there is kind of a legend um, or a story, a myth in her um, city in Mexico that if you feed the piece of a, a, a dead thing, it becomes alive. So. Essentially, that's what she does in her act of grief. And what was so visceral and so real about this story was the way in which each character who is impacted by the little boy passing away and then Monstrilio becoming into existence as a result of this was like how they expressed their grief throughout it. The story was or is something that I cannot stop thinking about. I just I think it was just so well done and a unique perspective. It does take inspiration from Frankenstein, which I haven't read yet, but I do hope to read soon. So Monstrilio for sure, if you're looking for a book that contemplates grief um, in a very interesting way and what grief says about the ugliness of humanity. That's how I would sum that up. <laughs> All right, so I think now I'll talk about one more book, then my three poetries, and then we'll kind of go into like my top books from there. So the first poetry collection I would like to talk to you about is No Sweet Without Brine. This is by Cynthia Manick. This just came out, to, um, I was gonna say today, this just came out this year, and it was so good. So, so good. It just brought me back to my childhood like if you know you know smearing pink lotion hair uh, like pink lotion in your hair a hot comb burning <laughs> like it was just so nostalgic for me and this is really just a celebration of the black identity the black experience in america the briny bits and all that is sweet i think the poems are accessible and well done and just very very real they felt real so i love this I have not stopped recommending this, so if you're looking for more poetry, check out No Sweet Without Brian. I also have What to Eat, What to Drink, What to Leave for Poison. This is by Camille T. Dungy. Dungy. First off, the title is what drew me in instantly. Someone who follows me over on TikTok, which if you do not follow me, you totally should. It's linked down below. Recommended this because they saw that I read a lot of like Mary Oliver at a phone. Tracy K. Smith, they said, if I like those poets, I would love this, and they were not wrong. This collection was so, so good. It was so interesting. Very romantic poetry. Um, the poem that has the namesake uh, is just probably some of the most moving, beautiful pieces of poetry I've read this year. Um, it's about love. It's about sacrifice it's about um once again kind of the black experience at times growing up in the south i want to reread it i loved it you can see i tabbed so many pages <laughs> um which i know triggers some people so sorry i should have said that uh let me know if you prefer tabbing or um dog earring lastly my most favorite Favorite, 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 favorite poetry collection I've read this year. Maybe of all time. Like, it's honestly, it's like in my top, I think of Life on Mars. I maybe think of like DreamWork. And then this one is like gunning for top three, you know? So this is Satan Says by Sharon Olds. I read Stag's Leap by Sharon Olds, which I knew. I was a prophet, okay? Because I said, love the writing wasn't as connected because the subject matter of stag sleep was all about her dissolving like 30 year marriage and i was like oh my god i've so i like reading things like that because 
it's nice to read you get like you know it increases like your empathy and but this this is it this is all about the inception of girlhood and its subsequent loss or kind of how it morphs into womanhood and the changes that occurred during that time um of course a lot a lot a lot of religious motifs um a lot of motifs on maybe what's insidious about this life specifically about girlhood what it means to be cursed and to love and to be loved i absolutely demolished this poetry collection too as you can see i loved it so those are my favorite poetry collections let's jump back into the books i will kind of stay on the same tangent or the same line as poetry um you're gonna say how this doesn't make sense it's because i write poetry and i read a book on reading and writing on pleasures of reading and writing in the margins by elena ferrante this was so good specifically the first essay is an essay that i will not stop thinking about i put the book jacket on upside down but the name of the first essay is pain and pen and that first essay encapsulated every single thought that I've ever had about my experience as a writer and Elena Ferrante is one of my favorite authors probably one of my most read authors besides Toni Morrison I just love this so much and Elena Ferrante is truly such an eloquent writer and what was really interesting was how she discussed how she merely becomes a sensibility kind of drawing inspiration from Virginia Woolf and using that line and Elena Fronte coins this new phenomenon to me and to her she found a way to describe it as fratimagalia oh my god I probably butchered that but essentially the disintegration of the eye the loss of self when transcribing human emotions and like trying to capture it accurately and when in the act of writing and she talks a lot about um, bending form and there's this kind of whole dialogue once again in the margin of the gifts and curses of form and what that means for writers so absolutely love this too let's discuss beloved by tony morrison this book was so good i've never read something so sad and so haunting but so beautiful at the same time Mor morrison's prose was I thought I was blown away in Sula. I think Beloved is like so, so much better. This follows the story of a formerly enslaved woman who kind of like escapes and goes to Ohio. She then lives in a home. It's kind of like all these haunting home, like haunting things that happen in this home, specifically the loss of her child, Beloved and the loss of her children too she just feels very lonely she feels like she can't keep anyone near her besides her other daughter she's just been through such a hard life being formerly enslaved she was enslaved and it goes into that it goes into the overall theme of our past and how we are kind of always remembering our past in the present and what that means for the future that's literally what this novel contemplates. Another book that I read that I loved was Freedom is a Constant Struggle by Angela Davis. Um, this is on Ferguson, Palestine, and I forget the whole title, but it'll be on the screen. And this was so, so good. It enlightened me. It infuriated me. It is a collection of speeches that were given by Angela Davis on various topics, but essentially, of course, the whole thing of freedom and how the cause and fight for freedom is transnational it is not specific to one group um the struggles for freedom are not singular occurrences they're actually all intertwined and that was something that i need a reminder of and it was just very very enlightening to read once again and i loved it i actually listen to it on audio towards the end which i highly recommend you do for the entire thing yeah so let's switch gears so i actually read quite a few novels on obsession this year 
what it means for a person to be obsessed with someone else. How does that manifest itself? So the first novel that I really liked on Obsession was Big Swiss. And this novel was so good. It's recommended for all noisy, noisy, not noisy, nosy people out there because this girl the main character this woman has the dream job of a person who's nosy she gets to transcribe therapy sessions from people in her town and she knows all of their business like so through that through her job as she's transcribing for a therapist she encounters the um story of the person who she nicknames, nicknames as Big Swiss. And from there, she just begins to spiral. She takes on a new identity. She meets Big Swiss at a park one day, totally lies to her about her name. And you basically see the result of all of her lies and her surmounting lies. Um, this was really interesting. It was a joy to read. It was funny. Once again, kind of dark, like heavy themes at times. Not at times, a lot of the times. But I felt like it was balanced well. And last but not least, another very viral book, Vladimir by Julia Mae Jones. Once again, another novel centering on obsession. We have a protagonist who is um, like in her 40s or 50s. And she is a professor, English lit professor at a small college and her husband is on the board however her husband has been accused by several of his former students of like improper conduct sexual harassment so it basically is a story about obsession and also power dynamics and how power dynamics are often abused by people it's interesting because the main character becomes like she's also very problematic in her own ways um she is obsessed with beauty and she believes that women use their beauty to access privilege but i just love this because i felt like the discussions and how it tackled power in academia was so good um also i love the imagery of like wild animals lurking in the dark hunting and being like ravenous and feral and that's the type of energy that this book has and those are all of my favorite books of 2023 i can't believe that i read so many good things but once again i think overall it was pretty meh because when i was thinking about the books i would include on here i felt pretty underwhelmed by my selection that i had um but these are i think the best books that i've read so far this year who knows what the next few days will bring and that we have left in 2023 but yeah thank you so much for being here i'm wishing you and your family a very safe and happy and healthy holidays and new years i seriously love and appreciate each and every person who watches my content i'm excited to see where 2024 takes us and brings us um for our reading journeys together let me know some of your favorite reads this year and um i'm always bad at this please don't forget to like and subscribe it's totally free it just helps out my channel and i look forward to seeing you in the next video bye